And so begins the beginning of uh, the Commentarii De Bello Gallico by Julius Caesar. In the first book, what he is going to do in the first chapter, this is DBG 1.1, give the outline and geographical detail of Gaul as a whole. So, let us begin with one of the most lines in all of Latin literature. Gallia est omnis divisa in partes tres. Gaul has been divided, but very often you will find translations will give you the more idiomatic is divided, even though technically that is not correct, in that when you see an S paired with a perfect passive participle, it is creating a perfect passive verb, so has been divided, was divided into three parts. One of which, a quadrum being a genitive, showing here part of a whole, one of which the Belgians inhabit. So the Belgians inhabit one of which, referring to obviously those parts. Another, the Aquatami inhabit. And a third one, they who. Remember when you're dealing with the who's, there are six of them. Ahu, you who, he who, we who, y'all who, they who. And you will know which who it is by the fact, obviously, you look to see what the verb is indicating. So, they who are called Celts, by, with, because of, from, in, on, at, the language of themselves, so that's what they call themselves, by, with, because of, from, in, our, as in our language, they who are called Gauls, inhabit that third part. Here's Yom. Omnes he. He, of course, comes from hik, hike, ho, who is, who is, who is, and so forth and so on. So all these, referring to those three elements, and as a whole, all the different tribes of Gaul, they differ, different among themselves in their language, in their institutions, and in their laws, three ablatives of all. Galos is obviously our accusative direct object, so I'm looking for a subject, and I find it here, with the neuter singular Garumna Flumen, the Garonne River. And so the Garonne River divides the Gauls from the Aquitani, so it's telling you the borders between these three main regions, the Belgians all the way up to the north, the Aquitani all the way to the south, and in the middle is Gaul as a whole, and that same Garumna River is the one that then, of course, divides the Gauls from the Aquitani. The Matrona and the Sequana River, obviously the Marne and the Seine, the main river of Paris, divides those Gauls from the Belgae, or the Belgae, if you would like. And so it's telling us, obviously, the borders that are splitting up these three main sections or regions, kind of like in the United States, almost every single state has a border formed by an actual river. I think there's only two, three states that have no rivers as borders. Nevertheless, so, of all these guys, a horum, again from Hikai Oak in the genitive plural, the Belgians are the most strong, or the most brave. A superlative, not fortes, but fortissimi, proteria quod, on account of the fact that, you can just simply say because, they are absent, they are away most longly, longissime, adverb, from the culture and the humanity of the province. For the province of Gaul at the time of Caesar's beginning consulship, it was not all of France as we know it, but only the southern coast of France, which of course we nowadays call the Riviera, very famous for its vacationing amongst the elite of Europe and the very wealthy. So nevertheless, they are the toughest because, one, they are absent most longly from the province, and it's from the humanity of the province, from the culture, and, que, leastly often, Saipe is working with Minime, merchants, Komeon, merchants go back and forth to them. And those merchants, when they go back and forth, would be bringing civilization and the trinkets of civilization, and that is immediately what he says in the next line, and not only leastly often do the merchants go back and forth to them, and leastly often do they bring in the things. Ea here is a form of is, ea, id. It is neuter, it is plural, it is accusative direct object. So they do they bring in the things which stretch, extend, pertain. All of those are acceptable. Here I think in the context it's probably best pertain. The things which pertain for the purpose of. Now remember, whenever you have an odd plus a gerund or a gerundiv, this is obviously a gerundiv. If it were a gerund, remember, it can only have four forms. It can only end with a long i in the genitive, long o in the dative, a um in the accusative, and a long o in the ablative. Anytime it's not one of those four endings, it's guaranteed to be a gerundiv. And secondly, it's doing what gerundivs do. Gerundivs 
modify. And so, loosely often, they bring in those things which pertain for the purpose of minds, the spirit of the people, if you would like, but it's really minds or hearts, for the purpose of their minds, about to be womanized. Not womanized as in obviously a philanderer, but made sissified. Sissification for the purpose of their minds uh, about to be sissified. In other words, if you have stuff from humanity, it's going to make you soft. And they are not being exposed to those sorts of things. Quare. And they are closest to the native Germans who inhabit across the Rhine with whom continuously, another adverb, do they wage war. The idiom bellum gerere is going to mean to wage war, not wear it. Quade causa. Concerning this cause, concerning this reason, concerning which reason or cause, the Helvetii, which are living in modern-day Switzerland, right at the north of modern-day Italy, but in Gaul in ancient Roman times, the Helvetians also precede. Now this verb is cado cadere, and we then put a pry on the front of it meaning to go before. They precede the remaining Gauls. We're going to see this word a lot. Reliqua or reliquus, reliqua, reliquum, which means the remaining ones, the leftover ones. So they precede, they go before the remaining Gauls in their virtue. So they are also like the Belgians, really tough. And it's for the same reason, because in, and those are both ablatives, that's modifying proleis, so that is a neuter second declension word, proleum, proleii, in almost, that is an adverb, meaning almost daily battles, they contend, they fight, cum germanis, with the Germans, when, so note here, this cum was with, because it takes as an object an ablative, object of the preposition, whereas here that cum is going to be when, because it is with a verb as a subordinating word. When either they, the Helvetians, prohibit them, the Germans, from their own borders, from their own ends, or they themselves, the Helvetians, wage war in the borders of them, meaning the Germans. So I'm almost done with this first chapter. Nevertheless, one part of which, meaning the whole of Gaul divided into those three parts, so one part of them, the three parts that we have talked about, Belgians, Aquitani, and Gaul proper, which it has been said, and it's it has been said, that the Gauls hold, so here the accusative subject and your infinitive verb, so which it has been said that the Gauls contain it, that major part, which is the middle of the heart of France as we know it, not the part down at the bottom by the Pyrenees, which is the Aquitani, not the top way at the top, which is the Belgians, it captures, capio capere cave captus, its beginning from the Rhodanus River, that would be the Rhone, it is contained, it is held by the Garumna River, by the ocean, and by the borders of the Belgians. And so we're basically telling the whole of its geography and containment. If I were to give you the same for, obviously, Georgia, I would be talking about parallels and rivers and those sorts of things like that. Atingit. And it even touches tango tangere titigi tactus. That means to touch the tango. You always must touch your partner. And remember that when you put a prefix on the front of it, odd in this case, in which it's going to be a alliter or not alliteration, but an assimilation, that often it will also change that letter in a vowel alternation. So tango tangere titigi tactus. Tactile is a faculty of touch. It even touches the Rhine River from the area of the Sequani, I'm just saying from the area, but from the Sequani and the Helvetians. And so therefore, it's telling you that it extends, does Gaul proper, all the way to Germany, which is bordered between France and Germany, Gaul and Germany, by the Rhine River. It, where it gets, 
and it looks into, it is oriented into, uh, uh, towards the north. Uh, septentriones is a term that just means the north. But literally, it's like the seven oxen, but again, it's all described in terms of celestial experience. So the Belgians, so now we're going to move on from Gaul proper, which is the heart of France. This is now the extreme north, and there's the word extreme, it's the farthest. The Belgians rise, a deponent verb, orior, Oriri, which is a fourth declension, it rises from the borders, extreme borders, farthest borders of Gaul, and they, the Belgians, they stretch, they pertain towards the lower part of the Rhine River, which is going to be to the north because it flows north. The lower part of the river is downstream, and they watch into the north and into the rising sun. So as the Roman would look at it, it is as though it is oriented towards and it looks into north and east. Aquitania, and notice what is different here, and I've always wondered why, but when we were talking about Gaul, he calls it not Gaul, the country, but the Gauls. He calls it not Belgium, the country, but the Belgians. But here, he is going to use actually Aquitania. I have no idea why. But that is not the people. The people are the Aquitani. This is where they live. The area Aquitania, and then I gotta go find my verb, and there it is, stretches. Stretches from the Garumna River towards the Pyrenees Mountains, which divides Spain, Hispania from Gaul slash France. It plays a role in every single Tour de France, the, of course, bicycle race that's the most famous on Earth. So, towards the Pyrenees Mountains and that part. Now, am comes from is, a, id, as, 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 a, e, a, e, a, e, a, um, a, am. But when it is modifying something, it doesn't function like a pronoun, he, she, it, or the accusative him, her, it. Instead, it is just the equivalency of a hey, coke or an la alud. So, to the Pyrenees Mountains and that part of the ocean, which is towards Spain. It, meaning Aquitania, watches between the fall of the sun, a kasum is again a fourth principle part, kado kadare kikiri kasus, that we turn into a noun. So between the fall of the sun and then the north. So at this point, we are oriented as a reader, beginning to see what Caesar has done and what he is going to do, and we are now familiar with at least the overarching lay of the land of this whole area that he is going to be involved with.